Wyoming Game and Fish Department personnel and mule deer hunters are concerned about the declining population of that species throughout the West. To that end, they've raised money for researchers at the University of Wyoming to start finding out why. It might have something to do with increasing elk numbers. Research project leader Matt Hayes described the study to Wyoming Signature's Pat Wolfenbarger. What is the deer project? A little bit of background, I guess. So mule deer populations over the last 30 to 40 years have declined in Wyoming 15 to 20 percent, and at the same time elk have doubled in size. Uh, so the Deer Elk Ecology Research Project is really trying to understand the dynamics between mule deer and elk and how they may be influencing each other's populations. Um, specifically, the Deer Project is south of Rock Springs, Wyoming, in the greater Little Mountain area. Uh, and it was really a, a grassroots effort uh, with Mealy Fanatic Foundation and the Wyoming Game and Fish Department uh, partnering uh, to try and understand these dynamics better so that we can get a better handle on these populations so that we can better manage their numbers uh, going forward. And we're, you know, we'll be looking at uh, predation, habitat, fawn survival and recruitment, uh, uh, buck uh, male dispersal from that country, uh, and then survival of adults as well. So how did the project get started specifically? Uh, so a few years back, Mule Fanatic Foundation and Game and Fish kind of uh, started talks and got this idea together to try and understand those dynamics a little bit better. And then the university became involved with Dr. Kevin Monteith, who is my advisor, um, to do the research side of it. And then we all came together to try and start planning and thinking about how best to address that, that problem. So what have you found out so far in your efforts? Uh, so we, I mean, we just finally have uh, our mule deer and elk collar. Uh, we have seen a little bit of uh, predation over the winter. Uh, so far, our adult mortality seemed to be tied to predation. Um, but we don't see a lot of migration actually in that herd, either elk or mule deer. They do move a little bit, but they're not, you know, doing these huge migrations. Um, and we do, we're just starting to, we'll have fawns hitting the ground here in another couple of weeks so we can start getting into that as well. What about human influence on, on the, the herd sizes? It's really strictly limited harvest down there, both for elk and for mule deer. Uh, and the interesting thing, South Rock Springs, there's very little development. Uh, there have been some proposals in the past, but they have never actually come to fruition. So there's actually very little energy development down there. And there's the road system is not like you would expect in a developed area. So we have limited human harvest. There aren't any subdivisions or anything like that down there. So it's actually a fairly pristine environment from what we're you know, used to thinking about and seeing. So what do you hope the results will indicate for the future of, of state management of, of uh, game? The big picture is to understand right, how those two species are interacting. So we know mule deer numbers are declining. We know elk are increasing. We don't really know why. Um, every study that's been done, uh, you know, most time we think it's habitat that limits populations. But you know, over the last 10, 15 years, everybody's starting to say elk are limiting mule deer, elk are limiting mule deer, but we have no proof, we have no idea. But if we can tie those together somehow, then perhaps you know, we do have very liberal, liberal elk harvest currently, but perhaps if we do see a link there, then we can change our management statewide so that we can uh, perhaps try and harvest even more elk so that we can have more mule deer um, or alter how we, you know, we're doing these habitat treatments on the landscape to better impact mule deer. But the big picture is to be able to understand those dynamics so that we can effectively manage those populations for the numbers that we want, um, not the numbers that we happen to have. What about the impact these herds have on their environment? As elk numbers have increased, uh, you could expect some decrease in range um, as they're out on the landscape. Uh, they, we don't typically think of uh, large ungulates as really limiting habitat themselves, but certainly if we do have that increasing increasing densities, we will see some, some effects on habitat. Uh, specifically in this area, it's probably not happening. You know, we've seen that in Yellowstone some with Aspen, things like that, um, but not widespread down, down where we're at. So what kind of things are you gonna be doing this summer uh, to track? Yeah, so the we'll, various, uh, we put animals. vaginal implant transmitters in all the uh, mule deer does. So those are actually expelled as soon as they give birth. So we'll be going out to those birth sites We'll actually be catching those fawns when they're very young, uh, putting collars on them so we can assess uh, mortality and cause mortality in them. We've seen some strange, well, maybe not strange, but some disease signals up in the Wyoming range on fawns that could be having a limiting role in that population. So we'll be able to track fawns, see how they're recruited into the population, how are they dying, and that's, that'll be the big focus this summer. 
Uh, additionally, we will be doing some diet overlap work, looking at diet overlap with elk and mule deer, uh, and possibly you know horses out in that country. Uh, we're still firming that up, but there are a lot of uh, feral horses there. So trying to understand what they're eating and if they're overlapping in their diet at all. And that's what the summer work will entail. What about uh, males? Yeah, about so we will be collaring males in this population as well. We're gonna uh, stratify on different age classes. So we'll have some older bucks, some fawns that we collar this year. We'll get collars on them maybe next year. Uh, and then that middle age class. So one of the, one of the problems or what Game of Fish sees, uh, our males just aren't available to hunt. Uh, so the thought is that they're dispersing or moving down to Utah or Colorado before the hunting season even starts. So we'll be getting collars out of males to track their survival, but also where they're dispersing to. Uh, there is some evidence that those animals do go down towards Utah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if they actually do disperse from that country. Well, Matt, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks. I appreciate it.